Yeah, you read the title correctly. This was the first time that cosmonauts went to space and were almost eaten by bears. However, these aren't space bears we're talking about. I mean, like, Earth bears. Real bears that we have on this planet. You might be wondering how the hell this is even possible, and we're going to talk about it today. Hello! Welcome to Brain Spill, the laziest show on the internet. My name is Tank, and you might be wondering who won the space race. And anybody who was an American would tell you it was the Americans. Yeah, that's right. USA, first to the moon, blah 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 blah. Yes, that is true. However, many accomplishments in space and the exploration of space weren't actually down to the Americans. A lot of it was down to the Soviet Union. And if we're talking about people that were there first into space, then they win hand over fist. And it's no wonder. The Soviets were first many of humanity's milestones when it came to going into space, such as the first Earth orbiting satellite in history the first nation to successfully send a living organism into orbit, the first cosmic rocket sent into orbit, the first spacecraft to reach the surface of the moon, photographing the far side of the moon, the first man to reach space, and the first shuttle to make a complete single orbit around Earth. This was everything that the USSR achieved prior to the 18th of March 1965, when they became the first nation to achieve a spacewalk. Alexei Lernov of the Vokshot 2 was the first to achieve this feat. It is pretty much this that we are talking about today. The Voskhod 3KD spacecraft had two members on board, Pavel Belyaev and Alexei Leonov. The purpose of the mission was to complete a 12 minute spacewalk. So did they go into space, push him out of the airlock and then just let him float around for a little bit? No, no, no. There was some actual science behind this. They were prepared guys. The airlock would basically have an inflatable deck that would spring out of the side of the aircraft so anybody that wanted to do a spacewalk would simply go out the airlock and into the inflatable bag, shall we say. But technically, this is a spacewalk as you're in space. After use, the airlock could be then just simply jettisoned. The way the ship was constructed meant that the ejection seat in the spacecraft was removed from the standard design and two standard seats were added instead. Therefore, there was absolutely no provision for the crew to escape in the event of emergency, which sounds like a swell idea. This will all play a part later, and we will of course get on to, you know, the bears, but one step at a time, people. All you need to know is airlock in spacecraft, and in order to achieve that, they simply removed the emergency ejection seats, which was a very, very smart play, clearly. Alexei was designated the job to undertake the first ever spacewalk, to which she had the specialist suit designed to allow him to undertake this feat without coming to harm. This was a specialist backpack that provided 45 minutes of breathing and cooling. Oxygen vented through a relief valve into space, carrying away heat, moisture and exhaled carbon dioxide. The suit was also regulated to ensure the pressure was kept at a constant. For such a short spacewalk, this should really do the trick. Pack light, I say, even if you're about to be the very first person to ever do a spacewalk. So, the plan was set, they launched into space, deployed the pressurised inflatable airlock to which Pavel would control the airlock from inside the shuttle. Alexei would be the one to walk out into the airlock, but he also had some backup controls inside the pod, just in case there was any emergencies. These could be operated with using suspended bungee cords inside the airlock. So, he entered, he was sealed in and was able to walk freely. He looked down and reported that he could see the Straits of Gibraltar to the Caspian Sea. This must be a pretty awesome view, not gonna lie. This spacewalk was 12 minutes and 9 seconds long, starting in mid-Africa and ending up over Siberia. Okay, good job people, fantastic effort. Let's go home, was what they should have done. And there lies the problem, there was some... Uh, malfunctions in their ability to do that. Alexei had completed the main task and had just undertaken the first spacewalk ever, but as part of his job, he had to attach a camera to the end of the airlock to record his spacewalk and to photograph the spacecraft. He managed to attach the camera without any problem. However, when he tried to use the camera still on his chest, the suit had ballooned and he was unable to reach down to the shutter switch on his leg. He turned into a chunky boy. After being in the airlock for 12 minutes, the suit had stiffened to the point where he could not re-enter the airlock. 
This required him to bleed out some of the pressure in his suit, so he could bend the joints to traverse back into the shuttle. Pretty scary stuff, but I imagine he's probably been well trained and to be prepared for such an event to happen. They managed to get inside and then had issues sealing the hatch properly, due to thermal distortion caused by Alexei's lengthy troubles returning to the craft. This then snowballed into problems upon re-entry to the Earth's atmosphere when the automatic landing system malfunctioned. The crew were forced to use the manual backup, which was further compounded by the fact that the shuttle was only small enough for the two astronauts who were unable to get back to their seats before going through re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere, meaning that the centre of mass in the actual craft was off balance. So the shuttle did not land in the designated location, but instead landed in the middle of nowhere in the upper Kama Upland, a remote woodland in Russia. Yes, a 46 second delay resulted in the craft going 240 miles off target. I mean, thankfully they were still in Russia, but where in Russia? It's a pretty big place, and where they landed was completely devoid of any civilization. So, whilst they weren't quite sure exactly where they were, what they did know was that this area in particular was very susceptible to hungry bears and wolves. So, they basically had to have their wits about them, because you never know. It also didn't help that it was also mating season, so the animals, the males in particular, were becoming pretty aggressive. So if you had two random Soviet astronauts land in your backyard, you're going to want to teach them a lesson or two. You might be thinking that two astronauts might be pretty screwed if they came face to face with a bear. But you have to remember, this is the Soviet Union. And of course, they had a loaded pistol on board, because of course they did. But thankfully they had this, because the gun was pretty much the only thing they had to protect themselves in case a bear did in fact try and um, greet them. Helicopters were unable to land in the dense woodland, so warm clothes had to be dropped for the crew to hunker down in the shuttle overnight during the freezing temperatures. Thankfully they weren't eaten by the local wildlife and they were rescued two days later. But an incident like this led the USSR space program to develop a specialist survival pistol a triple barreled weapon that could be used against bears, because that sounds like something that you of course need when going into space. So yes, I just thought that this was an incredibly interesting story of this first spacewalk, how it was almost a failure, and how the crew almost got eaten by bears. I don't know about you, but when I was younger, I always wanted to do the fantastically exciting jobs like being an astronaut. However, hearing a story about astronauts landing in a bear infested woods and having to sleep in a shuttle overnight where freezing temperatures went down to about minus 30 degrees isn't really my idea of fun, so I would rather have my feet firmly planted on the ground. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.